love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They will also match your first deposit up to $100 and you get a special pick when you sign up. Of course, I'm Treasure Wilson, aka Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace, Soon, and Cam. How we doing? What up, yo? What's shaking? <laughs> Nothing much. I didn't get a fit memo because you real dressed oh, up nah, today. Nah, you know, <laughs> a little photo shoot. Shout out to GQ cover. You know, niggas, we were just a GQ ass nigga. You know, Stat, we going to get you on the next GQ. <laughs> what we going to do is make your show top five this time next year, and we going to get you on the cover of everything that, that's sexy and related to female sports and outside of sports too because you know what I don't like? <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. You know what I really don't like is when y'all niggas try to act like Stat ain't down with me or us. Yo, how niggas ain't gonna put Stat in it? Yo, Stat ain't involved. With, yo, how niggas ain't... You think I asked them to put Stat in it? If Stat is not in it, I requested Stat to be in it, whether it's a, a list, a top 10 list, whether it's a cover magazine. Look, we was doing the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And some things happened that transpired that the cover didn't come out for, you know, reasons that don't need to be explained. I said, you got to put stat on the cover. Facts or not? It was facts. Cam, it, Cam always be looking out for me because y'all be, because they do be in the comments yeah. like, dang, why y'all never put, like, I love y'all though and I appreciate it, but there is a conversation. Like, I'm yeah. not like yeah, out like, the loop. <laughs> stat, stat, look, yo, bro. Stat ain't never write no rhymes that I know of. She ain't Amen. do no beats. <laughs> she ain't got no videos. Cover a Rolling Stone? The cover. I've been a Rolling Stone a hundred times to be on the cover out the gate. I was fighting for that. And I got it done. Thanks. Like I said, it was some shit after the photo shoot why we didn't do the cover. But Stat was about to be on the cover of Rolling Thanks. Stone. Get the fuck out of my comments <laughs> with all that. Yo, y'all niggas don't be doing this for Stat. Don't be doing that for Stat. I just had a, you know, and I'm not bringing up shit, you know, to uh, stir up shit that I'm over. But I was telling niggas outside of uh, me and, uh, like, the, the main niggas that be having people on their show. And I'm not talking about nobody specific because I'm not bringing up no old problems. I don't want no problems with nobody who don't want no problems with me. But she makes more than everybody. And I'm going to make sure she keep getting more niggas up there doing shows for $3. I'm telling you, man, that... That's a young, rich, black woman right now. I'm trying to make her wealthy. Stay the fuck out my DMs and my, not really my DMs, my comments about best thing y'all niggas they do is just stat, 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 stat. I named her stat. <laughs> like, yo, I, was, I named her stat. I just, you know, I, yo, we are not against each other. <laughs> it's not we, a competition we, we, at all. We working not, together. This is not a competition <laughs> whatsoever, man. Just have yeah. to say that, man. No, and I'm actually happy you addressed that because I think a lot of people were confused about some things. But yes, like conversations are had. We are working to be at the top together. It's not yeah. a competition. Like yeah. we are working together. Yeah. And that's how it should be. Yeah, so. I don't know nobody on no other show that say, yo, you know the last time I seen this and I could be wrong, is, is Oprah put Dr. Phil on. Niggas ain't putting nobody on on they shows unless they on already. Like, they collaborate. Like, oh, this person's a star on this show and this person's a star on that show. And then they collaborate and then they end up being, like, a show together. Niggas is not putting people on on they show. Like, you know what? I think you deserve your own show. Nah, they want to keep people under their wing the whole time to make their show better instead of empowering uh, not just other people on the show. But for me, a young black female who's smart, intelligent, pretty, and has a lot of wisdom to do, not only in front of the camera, but behind it. Get the fuck out of here, man. Well, one, I appreciate it. And yeah, make sure y'all check out the stat. You know my episodes drop Friday at 3 p.m., so stay tuned. Got a lot of cool stuff coming up. But let's get into the questions. The Spurs lost to the Rockets 93-82. to The Spurs are on a 16-game losing streak. So I'm just going to ask, what is the problem with the Spurs? You know what? The Spurs is my team, yo. A lot, a lot of people don't know that. I'm not just doing it, saying that because, you know, I may be like, 
this is my team and that's my team. A lot of people don't know. Of course, as Nick fans, I don't know if you know this. When you live in New York, you're allowed to have two teams. The Knicks, because, you know, you go through heartburn, heartache, uh, ulcers, all type of shit. If you just are a Knicks fan, it gets mentally draining. So for the last 20, well, longer than that, probably 25 years, the Spurs have been my team. Kim, how the Spurs been your team? The reason the Spurs are my team is because a point guard out of New York named Rod Strickland had went to the Spurs. Shout out to Rod, my nigga Rod. What's up, baby? And when he went there, I'm like, nah, I'm fucking with the Spurs. That's New York nigga there. And when he left there, I stayed with the Spurs. I was there before Tim Duncan got drafted. I was there when David Robinson got drafted. You know, because niggas be like, oh, all of a sudden, Cam, the Spurs. Nah, I'm, I'm Sean Elliott. I'm Lloyd Daniels. I'm, I'm from that Avery Johnson. I'm from that Spurs era. So um, back to the Spurs, we ain't shit. We ain't shit. When I, you know what I get? And I don't know this for a fact because his numbers, Wimbay numbers look amazing when you look at the numbers. But he doesn't have the energy that everybody thought that he would have. Like, I'm going, I'm here to take this league over. Man, I, I, this is my league. Y'all little niggas can't fuck with me. He got, look, I got my 20 points and my 10 rebounds, which is exceptional, exceptional for a rookie. But for a nigga 7'4", seven, 7'5", seven, with handle, three-point shot, dribbling. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's it's a little underachieved, and I hate to say underachieved because, like I said, if you go into analytics and the numbers, his numbers are great for a rookie. But off the eye test, it's like, damn, man, I, uh, he really needs to try and do some more. You know, I know New York, we got some of the toughest fans, and we 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 real fucking arrogant and fucked up sometime and disrespectful. But when he played at the Garden, the whole crowd was like, overrated, ch -ch 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 -ch. overrated. And I'm, I'm like, damn, he, he can't even get 20 and 10 out here without being overrated in their first fucking year. That shit was crazy. Um, For me, though, I won't, you know, like Stat already said, they lost the last 16 games straight. It's looking like they're going back to the lottery, but they're three. And 19, that is, if I'm not mistaken, from reading yeah. right, three and 19. So at the end of the day, I really can't blame it on, I mean, I really can't focus on the Spurs. What I would like to focus on is the Houston Rockets. I think that's a better story than just focusing on the Spurs uh, losing like that. The Houston Rockets actually are doing tremendous. What, what this points out to me is this. Because somebody cheats in their relationship don't mean they can't coach. You know, I mean, I know it was a big mess up there in Boston and so on and so forth. Um, but that don't mean that they can't coach. Like, they got rid of him, not only because he had a field, but I know it was internal. I know niggas boning president's wives and a secretary came out and I know it was a hazardous environment. But his first year, he got them to the championship. Last year, they didn't even, you know, they had a new coach, but they didn't even really get to the championship. So I will say that I'm more impressed with the Houston Rockets. Right now, the Houston Rockets would be in the plan. They're actually, well, I'm looking here, they're two games out of first place in their division. New Orleans is ahead of them and Dallas is ahead of them. So uh, I'm really impressed with Houston. I'll be keeping an eye on them. And right now, let's look at the people that they're ahead of in the West. The people that they're ahead of in the West is we got Phoenix underneath Houston, which that was my pick to go to the Western Conference Finals. We got uh, the Pelicans under Houston. The LA Clippers are under Houston. The Golden State Warriors are under Houston. The Memphis Grizzlies, we know that they're John Morantless, but they're under Houston. These are the teams that are playoff teams last year that are all under Houston. So I think the biggest story is not the Spurs losing 16 games. It's more about the Houston Rockets elevation and them getting down to business. As Murder just walked in, what's good, baby? What's good? What's the word? Chilling. Yeah, we was just talking about the uh, Houston Rockets. All I heard was cousin nigga... <laughs> that, the, the, nigga get someone on the side doesn't yeah, mean he can't yeah, coach yeah that, you, that, cause that's what I'm saying you know I don't think it was about the fear why they got rid of Indoka if I'm saying his name right Yudoka Yudoka I think it's about who he had the fear with 
It was with people that was internally with the Boston Celtics uh, franchise. It wasn't, you know, it was a president's wife or mm-hmm. somebody's secretary because after the wife came out, the secretary got mad like, oh, you fucking them too? So I don't think it was about that, but... Oh, it was more than one person? Yeah, it started getting a little drippy pause. Oh, he was going he's, crazy. He's going crazy. And then the fact that the alarm was involved, all that goes to show is that don't mean I can't coach. You know, it's like this with, with me. It's a lot of different things that people get penalized for because they, they, they're good at one thing. That don't mean they're good at another. Like, shout out nigga Beast Mode. Shout out to Marshawn Lynch. You know, he, he, he was in the studio the other day. Shout out to Marshawn. We wait for you to come back. Um, and I'm not saying, he's a, he could be one of the best talkers in the world, one of the greatest talkers. He could go probably maybe teach a class at Harvard. But everybody may not be great talkers. I remember... Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, like, Kevin yeah. Martin had Tourette's. Yeah. So when he's talking, this, and he was he's snapping. And I'm like, this man is obligated to talk to media before and after when I know that's part of the job in the NBA and part, part of the job being a professional. Mm-hmm. But I'm a great basketball player. That doesn't mean I'm the best talker in the world. And I know for certain people, it may set a precedent to be like, well, if he don't talk, I don't want to talk. And I know they need that to get the league to where it needs to be and promotion and grow in the league. But sometimes because you're good at one thing doesn't mean that you're great at another thing. You may be a great coach and a terrible husband. Does that mean I can't coach no more? <laughs> oh, Michael Jordan, great player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Win yeah, at everything, yeah, but don't yeah, win yeah, in marriage. Not only marriage, not, he don't, mm-hmm. do, he don't he win as a, win in, in, um, in the owner. As yeah. an owner. So, but he's a dope player. Yeah, real great player. Great marketer, sneak, sneaker salesman, so on and so forth. So um, shout out to Indoka, not on the shit you did to Nia, but the job you're doing so far <laughs> in Houston. <laughs> and I'm just going to give my quick take on the Spurs unless you have anything to add as well. But I, Spurs are they're <laughs> trash right I just, now. I said that before you yeah. came in. I, like, I said, <laughs> man, I'm about to put them with with Dallas. Teams I don't talk about. Ooh, Cowboys. Yeah. yeah. This, why is all of this coming out of Texas? <laughs> Shout out to Texas. What's going on? Yeah, listen. What's well, going well, at least on? the Cowboys every year are kind of winning this. You know, last two years, Pop, he been struggling because even when his teams got, uh, when, you know, Tony Parker left, Tim Duncan left, Kawhi ended up leaving way before that, Ginobili, he was still scrambling to that eighth seed some type of way. Now he's lottery. So um, <laughs> <laughs> this is looking like two years of a row in the lottery, so. I don't know. Yeah. I just want to say that the Spurs do have a lot of potential. I just see them as this work in progress team. They are one of the youngest teams in the league and they're doing a lot of experimental work. Like you have a big man like Victor Wembanyama who's still trying to get his foot on the ground in the court. And then they even made one of their young play- players, Jeremy Sohan, the point guard. And he's not even a point guard. That's not even the position he usually plays. So I think Popovich is going to over time be able to handle them. But right now, I think it's just a lot for them to be on the court against these other teams. I just don't think. They have their footing yet. They need some good veterans. Yeah, I mean, they do. See, the thing <laughs> about it, the thing about it, yeah, good point. That's why I was saying the Chris Paul trade would have been great for them. Yeah. Some type of way. I don't know how it would have worked out, but it obviously it's not going well in Golden State with what they got going on. Y'all got some time before the trade, trade deadline to look into that. But it isn't like LA, how May said the other day, how you're in LA, you have to, you have to, uh, yeah. You have to perform. It's not LA, but at the same time, it's a small market. But the Spurs also have a standard. Yeah. Like it's the yeah. Spurs. Like, yo, there this it isn't the big market city, but as an organization, Greg Popovich, one of the probably the top, top five best coaches ever. Mm-hmm. You got you got Hall you of got, Famers all over you the got place. Tim Duncan yeah. out there. You got David Robinson. You got Tony, Tony Parker, you got Ginobili, you got Kawhi Leonard, you know, even to a certain extent, Bruce Bowen, niggas, Avery Johnson. Yeah. You know, it's a standard. And right now, Wimbe has to realize that you're part of an organization that has a standard. Before you came in, what I was saying was, Mace, is that the numbers he's putting up is tremendous as a rookie. And maybe we may be just a little too selfish saying we want more. But at the end of the day, the eye test is not there for me. The effort 
You know, yeah. I think when you get to 20 and 10, you'll be like, well, what else do you really want from me? But when you're looking at it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because as a rookie, that's great numbers. You yeah. can't even get mad at that because actually you pointed that out one day and I'm like, damn, that nigga is average in 20 and 10. Yeah. I'm like, it don't seem like it. And another thing I was mentioning is like, as a New Yorker, right before you came in, you know, we're, we're one of the toughest markets to come play at. And when we'll he- perform. Oh. Perform, play. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's rough out there. <laughs> it's rough. I think the only other place worse than New York may be Philly. They, Philly's just, <laughs> Philly's rugged. But I was saying when- New when, Orleans, New yeah, Orleans. Yeah, Philly will punch you in your face. It's not big in Philly. <laughs> Philly, you know, you ever heard when uh, a nigga jumped in on uh, Lou Williams' car tried to rob him? And Lou Williams talked him out of robbing him. Like, what you doing this for, man? I got it. And then they end up giving him a job. On he had some, a gun? Yeah, on some uh, Frank Lopez shit, on some um, King of New York, Frank White shit. But um, I was saying how when Wimby played in New York, the whole guard was like, overrated. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, and like, it's like, because yeah. then you look at the scoreboard, he got 22, 20, whatever. I don't remember what he had, but it's not enough, you, you know. We yeah, and I think when you're talking about the Spurs, Spurs has never been about numbers, though. Even if he made the numbers as a Spurs fan, you know, yeah. every time they had a good team, it was never about the numbers. David Robinson, it always has been about collective and doing things as a community. So when you see Wimby getting these numbers, for him to have all of these numbers and not win, I think it matters more that they're not winning than him getting the because even if he wasn't getting these numbers and they were winning and continuing the Spurs culture, I think people would would really rally behind that. But I think when you got so many Hall of Famers around that you can't run out of clock with all of those people there. All right. Moving along, the Nuggets beat the Hawks 129 to 122. Jamal Murray was the game leader this time. Do you think any team is better than the Nuggets right now? I think. Well, I standings wise, they're they're third or fourth in the East, if I'm not mistaken. Standings wise, but what I think when it, with the Nuggets, my personal opinion, uh, Joker missed a couple games, which is uncharacteristic. Jamal Murray was injured for a couple games. Aaron Gordon missed a couple games. I really believe my personal opinion, and I don't know this for a fact, is that the Nuggets really believe that they got everybody number. And if they zero in in February or March and buckle down, then nobody could fuck with them. I think that their attitude is because when they when the season started, they came in. They was about eight and one, nine and two, maybe t- twelve and three. You know they and they you know they people took a couple games off. Could maybe injury, maybe not, maybe rest. I really believe that the Nuggets in their brain say we could turn this shit on when we're ready to turn it on. We just talked about it yesterday morning. When uh, D'Angelo Russell told Bruce Brown, yeah, you ain't got the Joker there this time, nigga. Because <laughs> niggas know when the Joker want to do what the Joker want to do. Nobody going to stop him. Yeah, that, that's what's going to happen, man. So um, do I think they're the best? Yeah, I think they're their best when, when, when they're going to need to be the best. I really, truly believe, and this could backfire on them if they don't stay in rhythm, that they think nobody can fuck with them. And when they want to turn it on, they'll turn it on. It might be a bad idea, though. I I really still think Denver is the best team, but that could really be a bad idea. When you start playing like that, when you just like, oh, we got everybody number, we're going to do just enough. I think that's what people are starting to say about Clay Thompson. Like we you get to that place where you've been too. good for so long, you're like, well, I can do whatever I want. And, and that's not how you get there. And that's not how you stay there. Good points. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Timberwolves. But also, oh. real quick before we move on. Yeah. Atlanta, what the fuck are y'all doing now? Like, yo, y'all yeah. niggas, like, yo, y'all niggas had it two years ago. Um, since Murray got there, and I'm not placing the blame on him. <laughs> Shout out to Jingles and the crew, everybody up there in Seattle. I'm not placing the blame on him. But that... That's just not working. The, yeah. the Murray yeah. and 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 Ice Tray is not working, and I have no idea why or what the problem is. But we gonna have to. It's not gonna work out right now. Y'all are in tough place. 
and y'all are four games under 500. This was not the the Atlanta Hawks that was looking like they're about to be on the rise uh, two years ago. And I will tell you this, both of y'all are young. I'm talking to Murray and I'm talking to Ice Trey. Y'all on the clock. Not with us, with Atlanta. They, if they figure out a good trade for one of y'all niggas, and I don't know if it's going to be Ice Trey because he, you know, he, 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 he puts asses in the seats. So that's a big deal as well. But to keep losing like this, they will figure something out to trade one of y'all niggas. Now, do y'all want to get traded? Maybe so. And if y'all do, y'all are on the right path. I'm telling you that right now. But right now, this is not working. And if y'all don't turn around, it may be a trade coming soon. What do you think about Bogdanovic getting 40 coming off the bench? He was 10 for 17. I didn't know about that. Yeah, Two from more. 30. Yeah. From three. He what? had 40 points, three rebounds, mm-hmm. and two steals. Right. Murray had 21 and six. Mm-hmm. Trey Young had 19 and nine. So they actually played a good game, but I think this is making Trey Young say, when I pass the ball, we lose. Yeah. Well, well what I'm saying is this when I look at the score of that game, yeah. Nobody's playing defense. It's one thirty, yeah, to like one twenty. Yeah, you know? that too. Yeah, yeah one twenty nine exactly. and one twenty two. Yeah, like it's, it's niggas. But you know how nigga be going pause nut all the time, and yeah. then he's saying, "Y'all niggas telling yeah, me to pass. pass. When yeah, I pass, yeah. we lose." Yeah, but when I score, we lose too. I tell her, <laughs> <laughs> "What's the solution?" So I, I dig what you said. I remember Allen Iverson had nineteen and nine. You were thinking of a point guard at nineteen and nine. Yeah, I remember Allen. And I said they that win. about they say I'm shooting all the time, but when I pass it to Snow and then he pass it to to homeboy and he passed to me and then I get it back with five seconds on the shot clock. What you want me to do? I'm going to shoot. Yeah. So a hundred percent, man. I, I that's a great point. I would love to hear what's going on in the locker room or the mumbles. The mumbles is crazy. Oh, yeah, the, you know when you talk about Mike. a nigga. You know when you talk about a nigga and they walk in there. Oh, you know, hey, he he's gonna come in there. <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah, them niggas is bugging. <coughs> I don't think Atlanta wants to win. You know, like one of those franchises, they I don't think they trying to win a championship. As long as they get to about in the playoffs, first or second round, that's I, good. I, I think personally, my, my It's not point, their expectation. I think my personal opinion about this is, is uh, Miami, um, New York, I like a little bit New Orleans, Vegas as well. I know Vegas does have an NBA team. I'm talking about mm-hmm. Vegas. And Atlanta may be number one on the list of cities I just named. Most dangerous for young niggas because of everything else that goes yeah. on outside of basketball. You go get strippers at 3, 4 in the morning. My man Lemon Pepper Lou left the bubble to go to Atlanta to get mm-hmm. chicken wings. From Florida, my nigga. Like, yeah. Atlanta is one of them cities, once you finish doing what you're doing, there's a lot of things to do. And you have a lot of young players that may want other things to do outside of basketball. We talked about this with the New Orleans Pelicans when they asked them when they was going to win. They couldn't even control it. When they, like, if they yeah, win the in-season said, well, you tournament. You know what we're about to do <laughs> with their language. Yeah, niggas start looking at each other. Shit, man. We in Vegas, too. That's what sometimes people are thinking about outside of uh, basketball. And I think Atlanta, I look, I had a good time when I go to Atlanta. I haven't been in a while, but when you go, it's a good time. You don't have to Definitely whistle is. Me Too stat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, so you, so you might be Dad, a, You said Me Too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Atlanta, like, Houston. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Atlanta, Houston, Vegas. So that's at the great. end of the day, Trey Young may be one year older than Stack. <laughs> you know, she she had the same giggle that Zion and Ingram had when I said Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> but she not playing 48 minutes Facts. a night, so it's a difference. Exactly. Okay, moving along, the Timberwolves' six-game win streak came to an end after losing to the Pelicans 121-107. to Do you think the Timberwolves would have won if they had Anthony Edwards playing? Yes. Of course they would have won. Yes, listen, man. They only yeah. lost by what? 14? That's yeah. like saying, do you think he would have had 14? You answer that. 
Well, yes, I think they would have won if they had Anthony Edwards, but I'm just discussion. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I was about to say that was pretty. Uh, I thought you was going underdog fantasy, uh, <laughs> just yeah. giving the money away. Oh, good. You should, motherfucking Pelicans got to do a lot to win back my motherfucking faith for now. For real? For real? Yeah, man. Listen, bro. A lot of niggas that, you know, and, I, and we got a long season. We got a lot of basketball left to play. I'm mad at these niggas who blew the opportunity against LeBron and the yeah. Lakers, man. I got a real attitude with the Pacers, and I got a real attitude with the Pelicans because y'all didn't realize the stage that y'all was on and the opportunity that you had in front of you. I was looking, at, and I didn't want to, I, may, I thought I was bugging when I seen it. But when I heard Stephen A. Smith say it as well, I said, okay, I'm not bugging. Zion, you looking chubby pores, bro. It, this ain't the, when you come in the season, that nigga, prostitution, but no, pardon me, not prostitution, porno females and strippers look like they back in your environment. <laughs> and food, a lot, of, a lot of food. Strippers, your girlfriend, porno bitches, and Food, great food down there in New Orleans, by the way. But you're not looking like the shape you came into in the season. And it's going to affect you because people are watching. You're not just a regular player sitting there going to the radar. When you're in shape, you're probably the strongest person in the in the, in the, in the NBA, pardon me. When you're, and you're not that tall. Like, you got to, you're like Charles Barkley with more power when you're playing basketball and when you're in shape. And right now, it's not resonating. That game, it looked like y'all just quit against the Lakers. So, no, I'm not impressed that they beat Minnesota. And I know Minnesota is in first place in the West. But like May said, I'm not going point differential or anything like that. But if Anthony Edwards was playing, no, I don't think y'all would have won. I think Anthony Edwards, I'm not saying he's LeBron James, but I think we, you know, we talked about it. Shout out to Matt Barnes and, and my man uh, Stack Five. Uh, you can catch me on that podcast coming out soon on uh, um, Up in Smoke. And we talked about um, just who's the best American player and who wants to take the league. You know, it may not be an American person who takes to be the face of the league after LeBron, but we had a hard time thinking about it. And them niggas wet the bed. They wet the bed, Pelicans. So congratulations. <laughs> what does that mean? They wet the bed. When it comes to, when they played against the Lakers, they fucked up. Oh They're, yeah. When they played against when I say you know, I say they wet the bed. I'm talking about y'all niggas had an opportunity to show niggas on a national stage that y'all them niggas or y'all the next generation of niggas, and they missed out on that. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I think I think good thing that Ja coming back. I'm excited. One more game to Ja. Word. Is this? I mean, looking at the at the game, it doesn't seem like they really like you was talking about. I think it was LeBron when you said this, and I hate to agree, but it's the truth. He's the only one showing that he wants to be set apart from everybody else. It's like people are not scheduling their minds to to live a life and in a way where they could be that type of player. I think it's too much people desire the fame that come with being a good basketball player more than it is wanting to be a great basketball player. The Detroit Pistons have lost 20 straight games. What should their next steps be? I think they need to get rid of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's a crazy statement. <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> I think Dre got a song like that, right? Get rid of them niggas, yeah. hide some help. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, yeah. right. Sick of these. Drake, yeah, I'm sick of these niggas. Hide some help. Sick of these niggas. Sick of these. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, that's one of my favorite Drake joints too. Yeah, hide some help. Get rid of these niggas. Get rid of these niggas. Yeah. The Ritz. It is what it is, baby. Yeah, like who's <laughs> on who's on that team Facts. you would keep, killer? I don't know one nigga on that team. The light skinned nigga who was first point guard, guard, right? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I you know I listen, man. You send wise men away too. Yes, you give up on them. I, I've been wise, I've seen all negative highlights. <laughs> all they've been showing is bad highlights of wise men, like you know, shacked in the fool type shit. They, they don't show up on them. Yeah, I'm giving up on wise men. Look, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely giving up on wise men. I'm, I'm, 
looking at why he don't even fucking start. The niggas getting 13 minutes. Golden State, y'all fucked up with that pick. Y'all really did. Y'all had a chance to get the, and he's always hurt too. But y'all could have got mellow ball and then even have to deal with all the Jordan Poole had a, I don't know if y'all would have got a championship, but I think uh, he would have fit really well with Steph Curry and Clay being that Steph plays off the ball a lot. Look, another game, who they lose to? The Pacers. Pacers, y'all niggas, y'all blew it, man. Pause, y'all niggas blew it. They would have had LaMelo and Poole. So that that year, the Golden State, because of picks, or they uh, that's the year they was hurt. Yeah. They could have got, I'm not sure if they would have had both. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, if they would have had both of them, that would be crazy. But they cool. they had the second pick, and um Wiseman was the second pick. And they LaMelo Ball, I mean Mellow, yeah, LaMelo Ball was third, I believe. And imagine what Mellow Ball in Golden State with a healthy clay and and uh, Steph Curry, that would have been something to fucking watch. Definitely. That second pick pause is always a doozy. Like when yeah. say, that second and third pick yeah. is always crazy. Sam, Sam Bowie flow. Yeah, Sam Bowie and Jordan. Um, who else was it? Greg Oden and somebody else? Yeah, yeah. Greg Oden and Kevin Durant. Yeah. Yeah. And that was just, you know, it's crazy. You got Greg Oden and Sam Bowie. Same organization, the Portland Trailblazers could have got Michael Jordan, but took Sam Bowie. And then years and years later, they could have got Kevin Durant and took Greg Oden. Two and, they, and they were saying that in the room, too. Like, we know we made this mistake before, and then they came back and made it again. Right. That got to hurt. That got to hurt. I don't know how much ownership changed in between those two draft picks, but it's definitely a black cat in the building. The NBA announced the in-season all-tournament team with Giannis, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, Tyrese Halliburton, and LeBron James. Do you think this was chosen correctly? Wait, I need to hear that again. Yeah, Giannis, Anthony yeah. Davis, Kevin Durant, Tyrese AD, Halliburton. AD? Yeah, and LeBron James. Killer, what do you think about that? AD is in the first team. Yeah, 41 in the ship. A lot of people would say AD should have got the MVP of... The tournament, but my thing is this: He had forty-one in the chip, and they ain't get him the MVP. No, we ain't get the MVP. My thing is this: uh, What you think about that before we move forward? Do you, yeah, that's you, why I brought it back yeah, up. Yeah, you, forty-one you, in the you, chip, you, and you, niggas you, put the MVP over your head. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be thinking like, yo, nah, these niggas is bugging. Because another game, he had twenty, so. In the semifinals, he had twenty, and then in the chip, he had forty, forty-one. I don't, I don't know how you don't get MVP. So you said he should have got MVP two set. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what's your reasons? Let me. He hear played you. great. Yeah. Like I was there. Like he just played great. Like that was one of that was a game from AD I haven't seen. In a he minute. looked like the old AD <laughs> right there. That was that was great. Like there's nothing else to it. And he was also playing more minutes. Like, I think even Austin Reeves might have outscored LeBron. Um, but, like, I mean, shout out to LeBron. You know saying because there was no <laughs> real big man he was playing against. Miles Turner was mad at us the day before about some outfit. Look, I'm not mad. I want to know your opinion. I'm not disagreeing with y'all. I just want to know how y'all felt about it. But the reason me personally, I would have gave it to LeBron James. If AD got it, I would have been mad. Me personally, as a Laker and LeBron James, I would have preferred AD to get it. If I'm LeBron James, I'm like, get this nigga MVP, so it's more incentive yeah. for him to go out every night and want to fucking play. Like, yo, you could be the MVP. This, look, you having 41 was part of LeBron's plan from the beginning of the season. Yeah. We said that we're going to give you the team as your team, so I think if he got MVP, it would have more incentive for him to play harder. Me, personally, I think the will of LeBron James willing that team along is the reason people go so hard. We and I know that doesn't matter. That's not in the stat book, the conversations outside of basket, outside off the court, in the locker room, nighttime, get ready, extra practices. That does not show in the stat sheets, but you could tell and you can see who wants it more than anybody else when he's on the court out of all nine players. And if you want to go 12 with the referees, nobody wants more 
wants him more than LeBron James when he's on the basketball court. That's the only reason. If not, I'm agreeing with y'all if we're going off the analytics. Mm. And then aside from the analytics, do you guys think the players were chosen correctly for oh, the sure. first in-season about- all-tournament team? Um, so again, Giannis, AD, KD, Tyrese Halliburton, and LeBron James. I'm not mad at that list. I'm not mad at it. You agree? It's pretty cool. It, it's, it looks weird without Joker on it, but yeah. Yeah. As far as the actual in-season tournament goes, I think that these players definitely did what they needed. So. Everybody outside of Kevin Durant is expected. They made it to the final four, I'm saying. Like Joker and I may make it to the final four. Okay. Yeah. Everybody else that is, is that's on this list at least made it to the final four. Okay. Well, let us know what you guys think. We're going to go to break. And when we return, we will talk about PJ Tucker's role with the Clippers. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. Welcome back. So let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. This afternoon, the Warriors will play the Suns. Underdog fantasy has Steph Curry at 28 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower? Mace. Higher. He will need more points to beat the Suns. Okay. Nobody else doing nothing. I get higher. (laughs) Definitely higher. Okay. Clay Thompson is at 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you have him higher or lower? Cam. 22 points. 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists combined. Yeah, Peter got to the point where nigga, I can bind everything to, to get yeah, Clay 22. to twenty-two. Yeah, give me, give me the over for that. <laughs> we gonna combine every. We gonna That's combine points, rebounds, and assists. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the nigga gotta get twenty-two. You would, you would think. You would think they play. Because they playing with your name they right definitely now. Be playing with that. They nigga definitely name. violate your name now. Because look, if you think about it, right? Think about it. Yeah. You get two assists and three rebounds and 15 points, you still don't get 22. You're right. Mm. That's, that's why I said you, you would have think. 12. Yeah. Four rebounds. Yeah. <laughs> five assists. That still ain't 22. Right. They, they, yo, they playing with you, bro. They yeah. playing with you for real. You're clear they violate your name. You never Clay. know because in the Trailblazers, he had 11 points, Thunder, 22 points, Clippers, 17. So it's iffy. Um, Devin Booker is at seven assists. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Mm. Lower. I mean, he's going to get more points. Seven. He's getting more points than us. He's going to get more points. I'm going to go higher. Okay. Make sure to download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. Okay. New report. According to Shams, it's been reported that PJ Tucker is frustrated with his role in the Clippers. They're trying to decide if they can find a role for him there or somewhere else. What do you think the best decision would be? My nigga Church, my nigga Church out there told me PJ Tucker's still in the league only because of James Harden. He liked the little seat on the motorcycle. You know, <laughs> you know that motorcycle? The, bound with, pause, the yeah, bouncy yeah, seat. The shit that you put on the side <laughs> right here, like when you got the motorcycle, it's the little seat right here. Nigga said, <laughs> Everywhere my crew go. You know, yeah, nigga said he wouldn't have no job if it wasn't for James Harden right now. Um... The Clippers, they're still not where they need to be, but in their last 10 games, they are 7-3 since Trey and James Harden. P.J. hasn't played in the last five games. I know he's frustrated. I don't know if the Clippers were the place for him to be. I think where P.J. Tucker needs to be and where he excelled at, uh, even though it was for half a season, was Milwaukee. Yeah, um, they, got, they got Bobby Porter's, but uh, PJ can hit that corner three. He's get down and dirty pause, and he would be a good backup for Portis if you ask my opinion. But it's definitely not working out in the last uh, since he's been with the Clippers. I seen a meme actually on social media the other day, and they said, "Kids, it would keep your dreams alive. You can still go to the NBA and have PJ Tucker like last." 17, 18 games, 0.0.0.0.0.0.0. And I was like, damn, man, they basically saying anybody could go to the NBA. 
and P.J. Tucker's in the NBA. I disagree. You know, P.J. Tucker, that's my guy. You know, we talk sneakers. He got a lot of sneakers and shit, but uh, this is going to be tough. And I, I like his story because, you know, it isn't like he was coming, went to a big school, got drafted, he comes out of D, uh, D3 school. I like the story, but um, I hope it doesn't end like this. Yeah. I think um, because P.J. Tucker, like you said, is his um, story is so so appealing and so uplifting to many that it's important that he be on a team that he he could actually play and contribute um, to keep that good story going on. I think he would actually do well also in Milwaukee or, or Denver, somewhere like that, where he could come off the bench in a good team. But it, it, it's crazy when... You're playing on a team and they're playing better without playing you. It's it's kind of hard to argue that. They've been seven and three probably since he's been there. Or I know he played in twelve games. He he scored he he's averaging fourteen points. But in those twelve games, the Clippers are almost like seven and three in the last t- ten games. So then if we stop playing you and we start winning. How do you like really get him back in the system if he was a part of the the, the rotation when they wasn't winning? Right. And also, let me correct. I was thinking about something else. P.J. Tucker did go to uh, University of Texas. Yeah. So, pardon me when I said. Um, so that's 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 it. Was, you know. Yep. Hi. In games, seven and three. Right. Gilbert Arena says Clay Thompson never improved his game. He said, even though he has four rings, he's still a spot shooter. So if one, do you agree? And is there another player you think that just hasn't improved their game? That's be crazy. It. That I mean, is true. There's some truth to that. I said that before. Now, nigga, now Gilbert Arena say he's, he know what he talking about. I said, <laughs> shit is wild with y'all niggas. So, <laughs> I said this shit like three weeks ago. I'm like, when we was talking about the contract, I said, look, right or wrong, I said he can't get a nigga off him. But I was, yeah. like, I was like, yo, that nigga Clay cannot, if shit, but nigga run down, he got a quick release pause, but he can't get a nigga off him. I said, he ain't got none of this. I just said this like Thanks. two weeks ago. And that's exactly what Gilbert Arenas is saying. He's a spot shooter. If mm. Clay had a li- if Clay had three or four moves, Clay would be outstanding. Not saying he's not outstanding yeah. now, but at the end of the day, he has. If you get up on Clay, he got none of this. He don't even got a jab to to get into something. Yeah. And you've been in the league long enough to at have least. To yeah, at, least, at least have a jab, yeah, one dribble behind the back, yeah, cross something. Right, exactly. Yeah. But he's such a tremendous shooter that I think that he thinks that that'll carry him the rest of his career. And right now, that's not working for him. You know, me and Mace have been talking about Clay's contract coming up over the last uh, couple weeks. And this is exactly what we're talking about. The cat's out the bag, baby. <laughs> they know that you can't get nobody off, and now your shot's not falling. So that's a problem as well. You all, your shot always fell. Now with your shot not falling, when you go to the basket, it looks forced. It looks like you're struggling to get a defender off of you, and the shots yeah. are falling. So he doesn't even have a crazy layup package, boss. Right, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. So if he, if I have you ever seen Clay do a step over jump shot? I haven't seen him. I don't, <laughs> look when Clay when Clay Thompson has seventy points. Think about this. This is a wild stat. He has seventy points. He dribbled eleven times. I'm not saying be a dribble ball hog like go crazy like we New York niggas. So yeah. eleven dribbles. That's that's yeah, before that's, you get to half court. That's yeah. you might come up to court before you get to half court is eleven dribbles as a New Yorker. But I'm saying. That means you just catch, shoot, catch, yeah. shoot, maybe one dribble, shoot. That's wild, 11 dribbles on 70 points. And I always thought about that. I'm like, that nigga just has a quick release and can shoot. Or if you leave him open, he's going to knock it down. But He was taught it wasn't about that. You could tell. He was yeah, taught, yeah, yeah. He was taught it ain't about that. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. get the basket. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, how do you play this long and don't have three moves? Right, absolutely. It's Look, just a jab, up, fake, right? What else? What do we... And then shoot. Yeah. Like, you got to think about it, right? And I'm not comparing the two because whoever you like better, you like better. 
Like at least Ray Ray Allen had moves. He had a couple. He had a, yeah. He could he get to, he, go, he could get to the basket. Yeah. Reggie Miller too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Reggie Miller had the best hill in the world, but like you said, or Ray Allen, but they had things to get people up off. And of. Reggie went and spent that summer with Kobe. Yeah. Like I advise you to do, Clay. You need to go spend a summer with Kyrie. That would be great for your career. It definitely will. But um Or Sham God, one of them. Sham God, Kyrie. Yeah, absolutely. Be wonderful for you. Yeah. But as far as um that max contract, man, it, it's, it's looking further and further away. When a, when a nigga got a dollar on the fishing pole and say, you got to be quicker than that. <laughs> so is he the nigga with the dollar or he the one he, the one, got it. he trying to get the dollar and, and go to state management is like you gotta be quicker than that man like doesn't look good for this extension man so I, I hope it works out for him bro the reason why I bust out laughing cause when the dollar's on a fishing bowl stat they're never intended for you to get the dollar. In the first place. That's just the excuse for not giving it to you. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to Gilbert yeah. to read this point, I don't, yeah. I don't know any other player who hasn't got gotten that much better. I think that Clay's always been stable in the shot been falling, and now that his shot's not falling, he's being exposed. Okay. Who is another player? No, that's why I asked. There's, there's a few other players no, no, who I, haven't I, gotten better. I agree. Better. I just can't think of, of his magnitude. Okay, of his <laughs> magnitude. <laughs> yeah. Who who's been that level and never got any better? Um, my goodness, it got to be somebody. Yeah, it's one of them joints we think about it. Come yeah, back we can tomorrow. revisit it. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it is a good question because it's a, like May said, and it was I a know great back game. in the day they was like Robert Ory. He just always stayed the same. But he never was the person, the, you know, Robert Ory was a specialty almost. Like, yeah. It wasn't like he was the starter with Clay's the number yeah, one you're two right, starter. You're right. But um, And it isn't like you ever held him accountable because his name pours his big shot Bob yeah. for a reason. He, he comes in and does what he's supposed to do, pours. Okay. So a little interesting story. When talking about a past date, Aaron Gordon said, I went on a date with this girl one time. Last thing she had on her phone was Aaron Gordon's net worth. So one, I want to ask, are you guys surprised by that? And then two, do you guys have an odd date story that you guys would like to share where something like that has maybe happened? The last thing on her phone. Aaron Gordon's net worth. I don't know how he saw it. it. Yeah, that's what I don't I know. Gonna... She, I don't know. Because what do you like? Here's your Instagram. Open? Like, maybe he's seen it, headlined. I don't know. Or she had her phone flipped on the table. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, that's. I'm going to keep it 100. It ain't surprising, though. It's not surprising. What I was going to say is, I'm keeping a 100. If I just meet you, I'm going through your phone when you sleep, too, because I don't know what you're trying to rob me, trying to scheme on me. I. And if I go to the house, I'm in your medicine cabinet. And I'm Googling shit. And if that shit say, like, just had a baby medicine, abortion medicine, <laughs> gonorrhea, because you know the names be like <laughs> Inflex Discuscus, Mark X. So you got to take a picture of that shit and Google it later. <laughs> nah, I'm going, that. look, it's a lot of things I you do, man. You're going to medicine. They be having mad medicine in there. You don't know what it yeah. means. I'm going right yeah. in the medicine cabinet and take a picture. Because yeah. you know, it's been several times that I've seen them like, oh, nah. Yeah, nah, so I ain't messing with these pills, you taking a picture of it? Because it be, you, 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 you know, you haven't been to a female's house in years. <laughs> It'd be several medicines and people. Yeah. You know, like, it might be ibuprofen or something like that. Yeah. But, you so know. you looking at what the medicine means? Yeah, yeah later yeah, on. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm not, not going to lie. I, I see one. <laughs> no, so my, how many pills, are, how many medicines do you have to see before you say this is a no-go? After I Google what they are, because I got to see. Because, you know, sometimes you may got anxiety. You be like, all right, shorty, just a little rattle. Or you might got ibuprofen. You be like, okay, yeah. a little bit pain. When you start seeing it, let me tell you something. When medicine start with Z-Y-X and the rest is, yeah. you don't even know how to pronounce it Z-Y-X. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, God, it's like, when I see that, I'm scared. I'm taking pictures and I'm Googling. It's like, true story. 
I was, yeah. I was at my homegirl house. I won't say one of my uh, female I used to deal with in the Midwest. I won't say the city. Wow. I took a picture and the pill was for right after a uh, abortion. Uh, you take the medicine. I looked at the date. Let's just say I was there January uh, 10th. It was issued the 6th. I'm like, mm. yo, come on, January man. January 6th? And I'm there to tell you, you ain't even supposed to let a nigga in that quick. He's like, yo, you, you ain't even got your stitches out. Yeah, that's like it. That's, that's that's I think that's like a six week thing. If I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken, you know what I'm saying? I may be wrong, but this, huh? Yeah, like that. You being greedy, you know what I'm saying? At this point, you can't, you know. So that's why I do that. Back to Aaron Gordon. I'm not just searching to go on your phone, but if it's open. Yo, this nigga got everything, girl. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Yeah. And this, and he leaving his watch around this, that, and the third. I'll tell you another story. This is this is the last thing before I, I wrap this up. I swear on everything I love. <laughs> Me and my nigga Bob, we we was um, we had met a couple females, not saying we was indulgent, but they fell out with each other. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They they end up falling out with each other. So I called the girl back that I met that introduced the other girl to Bub. So, so I was like, where's our um, friend that Bub was hanging out there with that time? I'm not saying Bub did anything. He was just hanging out. And the girl said, I don't fuck with her no more. And I said, damn, that was quick. What happened? She said, she kept talking about maybe taking one of y'all watches when y'all was asleep. So mm. I cut bitches like that off. I cut her ass off because I'm like, yo, I don't trust you neither. <laughs> right. huh? like, yo, sound like more to the story right. and you was involved with yeah. it. And this is why... Sound like before she <laughs> said you <laughs> was going to take a watch. Yeah, right. <laughs> you do her under the bus. Right, exactly. So, yeah, if Aaron going, I don't blame her. I'm not saying go through chick stuff and all that stuff, but you got to be careful when you're in a position where you're making millions of dollars or tens of millions or potentially hundreds of million dollars like Aaron Gordon. I'm not, I'm not sure about this contract. I wouldn't contract. continue to date. I wouldn't continue it. That sucks, though. <laughs> or, <laughs> I mean, unless you're just going to go crazy on her because now you know what it is. Well, well, my thing is this. I agree with you, brother. You you go to my net worth. You're not here for me. Yeah, you're definitely not <laughs> you, here for you're you. Not, you're not here for me because... uh. You you worrying about how much I got and what you could potentially get. I and now I can see if she Googled Aaron Gordon previous girlfriends. Uh, has he how many kids does he have? Have he ever been married? Aaron Gordon net worth? Oh no, nah, I'm That's out. Deep. Too. I'm out too. She definitely pocket watcher. <laughs> 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 yeah. And we to know the, what that's to gonna turn level. into. Yeah. Pocket watching. I lead the ear hustling. Ear hustling. And with a with, with a regular nigga pillow talking. <laughs> yeah, so she definitely she definitely listening into conversations. Yeah. She's definitely planning how she can orchestrate the money. And some people are so gifted at stealing, they don't take everything. They just be taking little by little. Yeah. And and I, I totally agree with that a hundred percent because you gotta realize it's females who strictly know their, their scheme, and, 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 and I hate to say, there's a whole special on it years ago. They're plotting on it, and, it, and it's fucked up. Mm-hmm. They're plotting on a junior now, or a senior in high school now, yeah. saying he's going to be the next one, or he's going to be the next one. And what happens is, if you're not prepared, see, thank God, mm-hmm. thank God, and it can't be for everybody. And, and, and this no cap. Realistically, I'm glad I grew up in the inner city. Yeah. Me personally, like, when we say the inner city, Harlem may be the most inner city ever. Like, yeah. I don't, I, it's, this is the inner you city. You one of, of everything. It's Pause. everything. This is like, you know, because I remember I went to school in Dallas. And it's like, you know, go to the city and I get there. I'm like, all right, this is cool. This ain't, this ain't the city, city, though. Know? Like, ain't the city. city, you know what I'm saying? Like, New Harlem, not New York, but Harlem is the most city, 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 city shit that you could live in. So when you see things and go other places and people trying to get over on you, 
you're kind of used to it because you're from an environment where everybody's been trying to get over on you your whole, so, life. Your whole life. So it's like, yo, you can't get over on me because I've been trying to get over on since I was seven years old. My mom put the phone bill in my name, my nigga. Like, they, <laughs> I haven't fucked up on credit since I got 18 years old. I was already behind the eight ball. So, you know, you know, look at, the, and, and so a lot of times these athletes been top notch since they was eight, nine, 10, 11 mm -hmm. years old. And look, not to bring them up or anything like that, because I know you had a little bit of controversy the last couple of months. But look, Dwight Howard gets drafted to the Orlando Magic. He's there however many months, has a baby with a cheerleader. 18 years old. Yeah, 18, best player he'd been since he was probably seventh grade, sixth grade, whatever. Cheerleader turned him out, did a somersault on the nigga joint pause and popped Ain't right in the same. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the other thing, listen, man, good thing with us, and it's not a good thing, when we was growing up in the 90s, AIDS was running rampant, like rampant. Like, you know, Magic Johnson caught AIDS of the 90s. Easy E caught AIDS of the 90s. So condoms was heavy. Condoms really been heavy. They had AIDS commercials that used to scare you. You know, you used to have, yo, know, yeah, all these different... Yeah, niggas didn't know you could live. Niggas didn't know you could live. You got AIDS, you was dead yeah, next week. you got AIDS, you was dead. Before next week. Right, that's a fact. That's how much fear it had. That's how much fear AIDS. Nobody was going, nobody was raw doing anything raw. That's a fact because you were so paranoid between drugs and AIDS and the commercials that you were seeing. Not only that, the people you would grow up around make your AIDS a, 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 addicted to yeah, drugs. Yeah, you ain't know nobody who lived from it. Right. You ain't know nobody, my, so. My father died from AIDS. So, yeah, I, you don't, in that era, you don't know anybody who lives from it. And now niggas is just taking a little cocktail and like, yo, know, my yeah. age was acting up yesterday and I'm I'm good. Yeah, she, like, <laughs> you can't she, spread it. It's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Imagine somebody tell you, you can't spread it. Yeah, exactly. So now it's more niggas ain't using condoms and they pull out game is weak. And these bitches is knowing that. So y'all got to pay attention to this All shit. All she needed to know was the net worth. Yeah, shout out to my nigga Dion Sanders too. Big salute, Coach Prime. Coach Prime actually seen me and Mesa's episodes when we were shooting in Miami during our first season. And we was talking to him about something yeah. similar to this. And he wanted me and Mesa, and we're still going to come down there, um, Coach. We'll probably come down from there for spring and just talk to the kids about Stop paying to get girls' bodies done. Stop cash apping somebody you ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, He's niggas budget is, is yeah, good. Yeah, Coach Prime was disturbed by all those shit. Coach <laughs> Prime get had, a body done. Yeah, Coach Prime had, <laughs> Coach, <laughs> Coach Prime had a whole... You got to realize, think about it, Murder. A, a BBL 7500, they getting a million. Yeah. <laughs> nigga like, Yo. Coach, stop tripping, man. I only threw it to racks. Coach Prime is older than us, so he probably losing his damn mind about that shit. He but, 10, 10 racks. Yeah, go ahead. The BBL and, and, and the massage shit after we got to stay in the house where they go, you know, massage ladies rub you up and down and all that shit. 10 Coach, racks for the BBL? What about her? She got to do her breasts if she do a BBL. That's what she gonna tell the nigga next. <laughs> that, that's what goes that. Nigga, Not even the same when one. When you're lying the next still. <laughs> when you're when still, you're, you're robbed. Rob. <laughs> when you're robbed, you're killed. <laughs> it's, it's that type of swag. So, Coach Brown, we did forget about you. We know that it was a real hectic year. When I say hectic, congratulations, congratulations on the year that you had. I know it isn't what you expected, but I see what you're doing in recruiting me and Mason and Stat did not forget about you. And we're going to come down there real soon. We just see that you had a media mayhem going on this year. And we'll be down there real soon. Yeah. And then real quick, just as a woman's perspective in regards to the Aaron Gordon situation, just as an athlete, y'all just, all I can say is just be careful because I feel like the wrong girl, not even feel like I know the wrong girl can mess up your whole game and y'all be stuck in the wrong, with the wrong people. So look, just stay focused, keep it pushing Right one will come. If hopefully you already met her. If not, it's going to be harder down the line. That's just the truth. But 
that's how it is. Just be careful. That's all I got to say. So you think you got to meet them earlier for them to be I, I honestly the right think, one? yeah, I think it's got to be somebody you After met you before. Because once you, the status, the money, things change. You People start acting know. weird. I think it's, it's no sad. Right, I don't think it's no right answer <laughs> because at the end of the day as well, look, you can meet, once you're famous, like May said, it's like, damn, unless you meet somebody just as famous that right. you can vibe with. But then at the same time, if it's a childhood sweetheart or something like that, you may outgrow Facts. them as well. And they're not prepared for the lifestyle that you're about to live or that you're living as well. Look, and big shout out to my baby mom. I love her. Love her well, to they death. don't want your life. That's what I was about to say. That was it. I was about to say, my baby mom's um, big shout out to her. I love her. Great mother. Uh, I knew her since I was nine years old. Mace knows a tough, tough female from Harlem. She didn't want the life that I wanted. And and she let me know that. Like, Cam, if you're going to do this, get ahead. But this ain't really what I want. And it caused me my relationship with her. But at the same time, she respected what I was trying to do. Never jumped in the media. Never said no foul shit about me. Could have would have. You know, I, I be seeing these niggas rappers, baby's mother's going crazy. So yeah. I just want to thank her for that and tell her how much I appreciate her for that. But at the same time, what I wanted is not what she wanted. Okay. We're going to go to break. And then when we return, we will talk about the new largest athletic contract. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall oh, oh. Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Welcome back. So we don't really talk baseball often, but mm -hmm. this is one to talk about. Shohei Otani signed a lucrative $700 million deal with the Dodgers. This makes him the world's highest paid athlete, but he will only earn around $2 million a year because $680 million will be deferred until the contract is completed, which will be paid between 2034 and 2043. Is this a good deal? Is that like an Iverson deal? Like where he he started getting the money? Iverson still ain't getting his money. That shit was some pension shit with Iverson. Iverson don't get his money until he turned 55. What Reebok that is. Yeah. What Reebok I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is it one of them deals where they just like preserve the money to later to make sure you never go broke? He from he from Asia. They got him over there. I don't yeah. think he ever going to go. Bro, I really don't know. I, what I was talking about, I was talking to somebody outside before we started filming about this particular contract. And what I was saying to me, my personal opinion is the Dodgers must know something that we don't. Like one of them, if you don't, I mean, I don't know if it's a guaranteed contract or not. I have to do some more is homework. Is he married? I don't think so. All right, thanks. Yeah. Um, that that might be the new way niggas is getting over on their baby mothers for now. <laughs> Give it to me later. <laughs> Keep on. Give me the money later. <laughs> Nigga be 24, but time this is up. Yo, I ain't thinking. Yeah, I ain't thinking that. Yo, that's what that, I was yo, thinking. Nigga yo, said, yo. yo, cause yeah, Nigga Tito just crazy. came and said, oh, baseball contract. That's a good fucking point. Nigga, that's like, the first thing I thought. Yo, that's what that, I said. Is he that married? Is, that, that is a great. Because you know, if he's going to court, it's like. He doesn't get the money to to twenty yeah, fifty four. If if you got a fifteen year old, fourteen year old, that contract yeah. is actually really good. Not to, it's enough to take care of you. Yeah, to where you don't get no extras. So whoever, you already gonna get extras with two million a year. So whoever's with him, they they gonna have to be there for the long haul. Yeah. Now for a chick to wait that out. That's just devious. Yeah. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. 
Stat didn't like that. Stat didn't Let like me tell you something. Because I want to get this right. I want this. That nigga get his money in 50 in 2050. Like, this, I'm going to tell you, this is the last thing before. I want to make sure I get this right and I want to say it right. And I'll let you guys end it. But this will be, this will be my last thing for the show today. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to make sure I type in the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to get it back to, to tomorrow, um, bring it back tomorrow. But let me tell you, son, you're having a custody battle. Janet Jackson, okay, cool. Well, her baby father, right, Janet Jackson. I'm going to make sure I say it, get it right tomorrow because I, I didn't think about it to, to just now. It was, you know, she had a baby with some super rich, like... Yeah, billionaire. Billionaire nigga. It was some shit where... If the baby is a boy, she gets fifty million dollars. If it turns out to be a boy, and if she's fifty million, how? It's a spare oh, she was divorcing him or something. No, if he gave her a boy, <laughs> which oh. nobody has no control over. But if yeah. you have my son, an extra fifty million, and if our marriage mm. lasts longer than five years, you get another fifty million. She had a son. And she filed for divorce five years and one day later <laughs> after. To fund, so she got like an extra hundred million. And I want, that's why I said I wanted to make sure, because I, I was watching the story on TV and I'm like, Janet waited a nigga out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to make sure and I got the she print. allegedly was hanging back out with Jermaine Dupri. Yeah. Hey, man, listen, nigga, Jermaine might have been in on it. I ain't look, man. Jermaine, Jermaine watched the show every day. Jermaine, I ain't, that was your man murder. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Jermaine, yeah. Jermaine watched the show every no, I day. I mean, that was props to Jermaine. I okay. mean, if she got the money and she could have her choice, she wanted Jermaine. I'm not mad at that. I'm yeah, not mad true. at it, but the wait out game was wild. Yeah. The alpha divorce one or two days later after this five year marriage thing is up. Janet do it to you then God, we don't stand no chance out here my niggas yeah, there's a real. few of us there's a few ladies out here but goddamn, Janet Janet little Penny <laughs> you know? plus your principal yeah man that was, that was fucking Willis girlfriend on different strokes I know I know that uh, Stat don't know what the fuck we talking about with little Penny and Willis on different strokes but god damn man Charlene was her name. It wasn't Charmaine. It was something, man. I know Willis couldn't give her a billion. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, shout out to Atani for making history. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh, so